It is you who light my lamp. The Lord my God lights up my darkness. Psalm 18, verse 28. It's been dreary out the last couple of days, and somehow that feels appropriate to the current situation in the world. In the midst of sickness, fear, and despair, we feel as if we are living in darkness. But Christ is the light of the world, and we need to focus on him. Jesus says in John 12, 46, I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in the darkness. In addition, we, as followers of Jesus, are to be light bearers and bring God's amazing grace to all those we encounter. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 tells us that no one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And 1 Peter 2.9 tells us that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. We must remember what it says in John 1.5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. As Victor Hugo said, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise. Ellie Clare writes in the devotional book, Everyday Grace for Friends, On ordinary days, candles and flashlights don't mean that much to us when it comes to lighting up our lives. We have electricity and plenty of lamps and recessed lighting for that. But what about when the power goes out, even into the evening hours? Our appreciation for light takes on a whole new meaning. These, my friends, are not ordinary days, and we need to focus on the light that still shines through the darkness. The light of God's grace is something we live by every day, but, as Claire writes, we often don't take note of it until we find ourselves in a desperately dark place and realize we require it. Well, right now, we require it. And blessedly, we only have to reach for the truth of God's presence and the brilliant hope of his promises to light the path in front of us. Thomas Adams says about grace that it comes into the soul as the morning sun into the world. First a dawning, then a light, and at last the sun in his full and excellent brightness. Even though times right now may seem dark, the sun still rises. Claire writes, you see it first only at the earth's edges, the rising light slowly sleeping through the black of night. But at the horizon, hope grows along with the colors of dawn as reds and oranges and pinks paint the sky. Soon the sun itself peeks over the hill and into view, its warmth washing over you at once. And with each passing minute, the sun only grows in brilliance, lighting the sky for the day. This is how grace works. It grows in our lives. It's enormity and heat always in existence, but experienced in increments as we wake up to its reality in our lives the fullness of God's unconditional love and the warmth of his eternal acceptance warms us to the core and changes the course of our day. We no longer walk in the darkness. We live life fully in the blaze of his grace. Because throughout all that we're going through, God is truly Emmanuel, which translates as God is with us. And we can turn to God incarnate, Jesus, 
in our times of need, who says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. I myself have been recently dealing with serious health issues unrelated to the coronavirus. I spent a total of 10 days in the hospital in January and February. I was first admitted for renal failure and was ultimately diagnosed with sarcoidosis, a disease that affects the lungs. Being seriously ill really put things into perspective, however. It made me solidify my values and what is important to me. At first, I was afraid when confronted with my own mortality. But I realized worry wasn't going to change anything and began to refocus my priorities. I had been very depressed, but I started to re-engage in things that bring me joy and peace and on things that grew my faith and developed my relationship with God. I've been reading the Bible and devotional material daily. I started a prayer notebook and have been soliciting prayer requests from friends and family. I have been writing gratitude lists. I have been utilizing a journal to keep track of my ever-growing relationship with God and His Word. And I have a lot less anxiety over things now because I know that it's ultimately in God's hands, and that God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline, as it says in 2 Timothy 1.7. My mom was impressed by the change that took place in me. She noticed how I interacted with the nurses and the medical staff with patience and kindness. Where before I might have been selfish and demanding, now God had given me the strength through the power of the Holy Spirit to keep drawing my focus back to Him and to care about others instead of myself. She told me, I see how much you have grown spiritually. Before you would have fallen apart and questioned God, but now you have put your health and life in His hands and He has given you strength. I let my light shine upon others so that God would be glorified. Once we know that light, it is incumbent on us to spread it to others so that they may see our good works and give glory to your Father in heaven, as it says in Matthew 5.16. And as Paul writes to the Ephesians, For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. We spread the light through both word and deed, and we do it through love. 1 John 2.9 tells us that whoever says, I am in the light, while hating a brother or sister, is still in the darkness. And as Martin Luther King Jr. said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. In the midst of fear and uncertainty, we must respond with love and light. Lisa Bevere writes in her blog post, You Are a Light Bearer, that if Christ is dwelling in the heart, it is impossible to conceal the light of his presence. It is impossible for that light to grow dim. It will grow brighter and brighter as day by day the mists of selfishness and sin that envelop the soul are dispelled by its bright beams. She insists that you and I were created to be a light to those around us, not to point out the darkness that blinds us from the truth. She continues, God is light, and where there is light, there is vision. Where there is vision, there is hope and recovery of sight. Where there is sight, there is revelation. With the revelation of how God does things, we will learn to live in sync with him. 
Children of God have always strived to bring his light unto others. Even in the Old Testament, we can see the light of Christ, as when Joseph bore the light in Egypt, and the Israelites provided light to other nations on their way to the Promised Land. In the New Testament and carrying on today, followers of Jesus are light bearers as well. We point the way towards salvation and heaven. We exhibit God's abundant grace and mercy, even in the midst of darkness. What we do to help others glorifies God the Father and can bring more people into God's kingdom. We must be those who give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and guide our feet into the way of peace. Luke 179. When things seem darkest, we have to remember that we are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness, as Paul writes to the Thessalonians. A BBC News article describes the positive things happening in the midst of this pandemic. Gherkin writes, The pandemic has led to acts of kindness around the world, from delivering soup to the elderly in the UK, to an exercise class held for quarantined residents on their balconies in Spain. You probably have seen it on social media, people offering to help other people out. And I'm reminded of the Fred Rogers quote, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. What can we do to lift others up now? Try to stay in communication with family and neighbors, your church family, and others. I know it's hard not to be in personal contact right now, but we can still let our light shine in other ways. Get creative. Do a partner Bible study online or over the phone. Think outside of the box. Share the light while striving to stay healthy yourself. And by doing this, we will give God the glory and hopefully bring others to come to know his love. God is still with us, and he is including us in his work as his light bearers. We must bring the light to all those we encounter, because the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Ephesians 5.9 And that's what we need more of right now. Desmond Tutu describes hope as being able to see that there is light, despite all of the darkness. A recent article on Crosswalk.com tells us that in the midst of fear and uncertainty, Christians have a tremendous opportunity to be the salt and the light of the world. It invites us to imagine what the next few months could look like if the church took the lead on giving, compassion, and community care during this trying season. We can and should make an impact by being light bearers. It is the best testimony of Christ's love for humanity that we love the world the way he does. After all, it is by our love that the world will know, will know that we are his. And it is by his love and light that we will get through this together. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the light of our lives. Thank you for leading us through the darkness. We just praise you and thank you for your grace during trying times. Please help us in the midst of darkness to live as children of light, as your children. Help us to be of service to our neighbors Help us to love with a love like yours. We thank you for seeing us through this darkness and glorify your holy name. and the mighty name of the shining Christ, we pray these things. Amen.